you know, I didn't want to lose touch with New York City, but I did join the Northeast Georgia uh, Mineral Club and the Georgia Mineral Society. And both wonderful groups. The Georgia Mineral Society hosted field trips, socially distanced. They capped the number of people. Um, so they were running a professional organization, the Northeast Jet uh, Mineral Club hosted meetings. I was a little bit, you know, at first a little bit uncomfortable, but they were following all the protocols and this and that. Um, so I was able to stay connected to gem and mineral uh, community here. And one of the field trips in the fall was for fossils at a place called the Union Chapel Mine. And it's just north of Birmingham, Alabama. <clears throat> it's got an interesting story. It's a coal mine. And the grandson of the owner in the 90s, I guess since he's the grandson, he could run around there. He picked up some of the rocks and took them to show and tell at his science class. And his science teacher realized that there was something significant here. So the family had planned to sell the property actually. But considering that they found significant fossil traces, it ended up the state got involved, the university got involved. You know, the, the young man probably lost, on a, uh, lost out on a great trust fund or on having his college paid for if the family were to sell that land. But it ended up becoming a very significant um, paleontological site. It is an pictures are coming. It sits on an area that was marsh and swamp, and it had land. It's from about 300, 300 million years ago. But it had, they found footprints. They found branches. They found um, bivalves. They found sea life. Uh, because it had so many different ecosystems going on at one time, it ended up uh, being a very significant place. And I guess if you were there in the 90s, you know, I guess you saw some beautiful pieces of tracks of lizards, different tetrapods that, you know, are now in the collection at the university. But it ended up being a great partnership between the state, the university, and local paleontological clubs. So we had the chance to go out there, and you'll see it's uh, almost five hours drive. So I left the night before and stayed in Birmingham and got a little taste of Birmingham. I walked around a little bit, found the lounge, sat at the bar, and behind the bar was a mural of the... Uh, periodic table of elements, if you can believe it or not. So I said, well, this is the place for me. So I got to enjoy Birmingham a little bit. Then the next morning, met up with the group, and we went to what is now a fossil site, former coal site. And I bet, I bet you've all seen these sites. It's the slate and the shale. Um, you know, that it, it reminded me a lot of what we see in Pennsylvania, central and western Pennsylvania. So you've got, you know, from a rock counting perspective, you've got the choice you can, you know, you can sift through and surface hunt. Um, or you can try to find some new material and see if you can split it. It was all that shale. So, you know, things would crack very easily as long as you found the seam. So it was, it, all it required was a, a chisel and a hammer. And a lot of people were uh, surface collecting. Here you can see some members of that, of the club. Uh, you can see there are some pretty big chunks out there. Um, 
The problem with the site, I spoke to someone who visits there a lot, is that they just have not overturned it. There are a lot of people who feel like if, if they had gotten a backhoe or some industrial equipment, if they could go deeper, they feel like they'd find, you know, perhaps new, you know, new fossils, new species, perhaps. Here are some of the fossils I collected. I, I thought I had, you know, I thought I had tracks here. I, I was ready to call National Geographic, but, but someone who had been there many more times in my single visit identified these fossils. Those are air bubbles from the marsh, from the swamp area. It was so muddy. If you can imagine that, that even the air bubbles are preserved. So I thought that was cool. I mean, that and that makes sense to see how smooth and flat and uninterrupted the rest of the surface is, except for those air bubbles in the mud. And you can just picture you know, a swamp or a marsh bubbling like that. And there's a close up uh, of one of those air, air bubbles, air pockets. Now there are also branch and tree parts. So, you know, this, this reminds everybody of, you know, what you see in Pennsylvania. Um, you can see the dark areas are bark, um, twigs, this is interesting, this is some sort of a critter, I actually did find a critter, um, <clears throat> there were not enough, some people had started leaving a little bit earlier than planned, it was a very hot day when we were there, but this is some sort of a, someone else thought perhaps this was some sort of a worm, um, some sort of creature. Here is another um, tree bark impression. And then I did a lot of work to uncover this. That is sitting on top of uh, my backpack. And I thought jackpot, you know, I'll, I'll take it. That is, that is a clear branch from 300 million years ago. That's, that's all the prize I need. Not that, not that this house or like any of your houses need any more specimens for display, uh, but here it is here. So I'm quite proud of, quite proud of this fossil. And again, it's just a very well-defined uh, branch, tree, stick, limb from that ancient forest. So that when I return to New York City, I have I have plans right now for that to get a stand and display it prominently. Well, we'll see. We'll see if that, if that happens. Um, but it was a very special place. One thing I do advise everybody, here's a suggestion. Um, you know, the way that the clubs, I, I discovered the way that the clubs, you know, both clubs, they are Eastern Federation and Southern Federation. You know, you can join and then you are eligible for their field trips. So, you know, the way that I remain a member of New York while I am here in Georgia, I do plan on remaining a member of those Georgia clubs. Um, you know, they have some fascinating trips. And this fossil site is completely off limits. 
know, they had to arrange it. Um, they had to have arranged it with the state and the university. So it's just something to think about if you're, um, if you're considering about ways and to get out on some sanctioned field trips. Um, both those clubs gave me that opportunity. So that was a lot of fun. Um, and again, it was just a privilege to be on such an important site. Um, if you look up Union Chapel Mine, you will see it's also now called the Stephen Minken footprint site, Paleozoic footprint site. And they have pictures from the 90s where, I mean, you can see the, you can see the impressions of different lizards and tetrapods and how they were running across just some fantastic fossils from the 90s. So that is the Alabama adventure. Let me switch now to the to the Georgia adventure, the Georgia adventure, which uh, continues. Um, this was another field trip for Aghet. Um, Georgia's state mineral is quartz, and I have found. You know, I, I have had access where we are living right now to a lifetime supply of quartz. If anybody wants quartz, contact me before I leave. I, like I said, I have a lifetime supply. Um, in Georgia, I was told you can find just about every mineral possible on the spectrum down here. This trip was for lace, Banded, moss, agate, great for display. I guess the, the cabochon lapidary artisan part of the club was, you know, gets really excited about this annual trip um, because it's such great material for faceting, um, because it's such great material for fasting or lapidary. Um, someone asked about the size of the Georgia quartz. Uh, uh, I just want to answer the gentleman's question. I found points. I found quite a number of places with clear points. Um, it's the big, the big pieces are more of that solid cloudy quartz, however. I haven't, I haven't found a big sector of clear quartz yet. Um, but it certainly is around here. Uh, going back to the agate, this was a field trip on a Saturday out to a mine. This is a working mine. They, I, through somebody's relationship, they open it up on the weekend to clubs. And if you look at this map where Somerville is, this geologic formation extends up into Tennessee. I guess, I guess there's just a lot of this great looking act in Northwest Georgia. Most of it is either on federal protected forest or other private property. So it's not as accessible. But I, I was the first one at this site. So I thought I'm gonna take some pictures. So here is the working, uh, working mine. Uh, it was a beautiful day. Thank goodness the, I was able to use the camera. Let's see. Diane, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear okay. you. Um, so here was, uh, you know, I was able to take some panoramic pictures. 
and um, it's a you'll 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 get a kick out of why I was the only person there. Again, this was supposed to be a field trip. Um, and this was way out in the middle of the woods. And I mean, by way out, the directions were coordinates. It wasn't turned left at this. I mean, once you got off the highway, then it was just all coordinates. So I had been driving around a little bit and finally found an open area through some woods, drove that way, and it took me to this pit. So I figured this must be the spot. And for the morning, I had it all to myself, actually. There was a, there was a couple who came up, and they explained that they are artisan jewelers, and they said, we love this lace agate. We come up once a year to collect it. And so I thought, well, this is pretty good stuff then. Here's an example um, of it straight out of the, you know, straight off the ground, literally. Um, you know, you need to wet it. It needs to be polished uh, or it needs to be tumbled for the colors to really come out. But you can see some of those bands, some of those laces, some of the colors. Here was my haul. I figured, I figured, you know, let me take a lifetime supply. That's that's something I, you know, uh, whenever you are rock hounding anywhere, just remember to always just pick, get a lifetime supply. So I was able to fill up buckets, that barrel with some good sized stones. Some of the bigger ones there are behind me here. And then here's what they look like up close. Um, just that beautiful banded lace. I've heard it called crazy agate. So it was a very good day. <clears throat> um, for agate. Um, going back to, you know, again, this was a sanctioned field trip. I was supposed to meet members of the Georgia Mineralogical Club. You know, but I got there and you know, nobody else really showed up. So I figured that maybe it got canceled and I missed the email, but I wasn't going to take miss this chance. So I had been working on that mine all day or excuse me, all morning, all by myself. And then, you know, finally it's got to have, uh, got to get lunch and I couldn't fill up the car anymore. So I leave and then I get on the highway and I drive about a quarter of a mile and I see a big sign that says, welcome Georgia Mineral Society. And it was a different mine altogether. So I pulled in and I said, I'm sorry, I'm late. I was at that other mine about a quarter of a mile away. And they said, what other mine? So I just kept my mouth shut and just said, oh, sorry, I'm late. Uh, I hope I can, uh, say hello to everybody so i was able to look at the other place um but i share that because this agate is all over northwest georgia and um you know i've shared this before you know i've never do anything illegal but you know sometimes you might do something unlegal you know who knows when you're out when you're out rock counting um, but this, this mine where I was, was evidently open to the public since another couple was there, but I certainly am pleased with, with the, um, with what I found. Here, okay, now you're, you're going to see what this looks like tumbled 
next. I mean, you're going to be amazed at the transformation. Here are those same pieces tumbled. I mean, it. I, I, when I moved down here, when I realized the rock mineral crystal possibility, I bought a large tumbler. Um, not the National Geographic one, but this is a 20 pound barrel. Um, it's not coming back to New York City with me. I don't see how that's possible, but I've, but I've been able to use it nonstop and have been tumbling this agate. And if someone, I mean, I've got some, I would love to share it with somebody who makes cabochons. I mean, I think it would just be, make for some beautiful jewelry also. Uh, this, this is one of my favorite pieces. This is like a moss agate, the way that it's got um, the very, the very thin lines. Here's another example. I, with that big tumbler, you're able to tumble bigger pieces, as you can see there. Uh, and then this is my favorite. If, if Bravo were to do a rock tumbling reality show competition, I think this one would win. Uh, that, that one's just about perfect. And then one more here is just a beautiful tumble. These are the same stones that I have tumbled for a little over four weeks. And, and also let me share with you, please, um, what that tumbler looks like. This has been this has been the best tumbler. This this piece of craftsmanship. I bought two different tumblers, returned them before I settled on this one. The barrel just comes right off of the rollers. Um, it's it's about as easy to use as one um, could want. And with the size of that barrel, you're able to, like I said, polish, polish stones that are this size, which, you know, which, which is a lot of fun. You know, I, I expect it to just be tumbling, you know, little stones, which is fine too. And I, and I love the beauty and aesthetic of those too, but it's been a lot of fun tumbling those large stones. <laughs> 